out of 10 cats. Off the brook, it's Alex Brooker. YI pet, it's Chris Ramsey. And their team captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, the beard and the wonderful, it's Joe Wilkinson. From man down, it's Roisin Conaty. And their team captain, Sean Locke. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats Uncut, a show all about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 80% of obese people say they've got no idea how much they should be eating? Here's a clue. Less than that. 30% <laughs> of people say their favourite meal hasn't changed since childhood. My favourite meal's still the same. Sucking on boobies. Right, Mum? <laughs> 18% of the population has sleepwalked. My girlfriend's a terrible sleepwalker. A few weeks ago, she sleepwalked out of the house, sleep met up with her ex-boyfriend, they sleep shagged, and now she's sleep left me. When she wakes up, she's gonna be so embarrassed. <laughs> right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our palace job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean Steen, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Um, I think people have been talking about Guy Fawkes Night. Did you, did you go to a bonfire? No. I, I don't really like fireworks. I think they're like looking at views. Just boring after a while. <laughs> yeah, views. Yeah. I mean, the whole eye is overrated as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You don't like views. But listen, you go out and then you've got to look at the photos and you go, this is great. And then three minutes in, you think, I'm bored now. I'm cold. <laughs> and then you're stuck there. Sean, is it a big night in your house? Do you do the bonfires? Yeah, I like, I like the bonfire thing. I mean, I had to take the RSPCA's advice uh, quite seriously because they said you should check under, the, under your bonfire for sleeping hedgehogs. And I couldn't find any, but luckily I had some in the freezer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, got that sorted. Yeah, sure. I, um, I think I look like Guy Fawkes because um, the people on our road did an effigy and it really looked like me. <laughs> <laughs> They'd done it on our road, it was right in front of my house. It was, it was, it was kind of in my front garden. <laughs> They'd even used like a photocopy of my face. <laughs> and they were like chanting, Weirdo out, weirdo out, weirdo out, which must be like a traditional chant or something. John, do you, did you go to a fire with this place? It was a landmark year for me. This was the first year when I couldn't even be bothered to go to the window to look. <laughs> <laughs> How, Usually, I mean... if I hear some, I'll go and have a look at my neighbour's fireworks, but this year I just thought, nah, I'm enjoying Gogglebox. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone who pays an entrance fee to a bonfire display doesn't understand what the sky is. <laughs> like, two pound in, I'm gonna stand on that car over there and play with my two pound that I've just saved. <laughs> Taunt them with it. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> the best firework display, I think, in history it was in Scotland a couple of years ago. It was meant to last half an hour, but due to a technical hitch, all the fireworks went off in under a minute. <laughs> oh, my Let's have a look, this was meant to last half an hour. to the window for that, wouldn't you, John? I would have, yeah, if I'd have heard Armageddon outside <laughs> my window. <laughs> Just imagine being there thinking, oh, how are they going to follow this up? It's <laughs> harder <laughs> not. <laughs> I'd like to see the guy's face who lit them all and at the end just <laughs> stood there, just like that. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, would you Sparkless? try to stop them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he just wanted to beat the traffic. He just sat and just ran to his car. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see if Firework Night is up there. <laughs> yes, it was Bonfire Night this week. 
In one town in Kent, locals burnt an effigy of Apprentice star Katie Hopkins, which seems crazy because you can get the real Katie Hopkins for £75 plus travel. <laughs> That's always the fascinating thing about effigies, isn't it? Is you can see the start of it thinking, yeah, I'm going to make an effigy of Katie Hopkins. <laughs> and then you start it, and then hopefully, after about ten minutes, you go, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> And then stop, but it's the actual, it's the desire to finish it. Yeah. Have you got like loads of half finished effigies in your garage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your Nothing. one's nearly done. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hair I'm having trouble with. <laughs> Can't get it quite like an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be just right, Chris. <laughs> OK, um, John's team, what do you think the nation should be talking about this week? What about the uh, Tesco... Tesco have got new technology that means they can scan your face and tell you what you want to buy when you're in a garage? I'm not sure... <laughs> is that...? <laughs> is that a good idea? I mean... I, I could do that. Petrol. <laughs> <laughs> The Tesco's are rolling out new advertising screens in 450 of their petrol stations. They use hidden cameras to scan people's faces to determine their age bracket and if they're male or female, and then they can sort of market products to them. So how do they tell you what, you, what they think you should buy? Do they whisper it? <laughs> do they no. come up to you and go, I think you need some crisps. <laughs> I think they would look at you, Sean, and how go, they... I think moisturiser, maybe, you know. <laughs> Prunes. <laughs> Spray. They've, had, they've had this technology in toilets for years, though. I go into a garage, and when I get in the cubicle, it tells me exactly what they think I'd like to do to someone and who I can call. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you used to work for Tesco's. Yeah. Is this a good idea? I was a heartthrob on the tills back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> heartthrob on the tills? Yeah, of course you were. <laughs> <laughs> where were you? Just on the main tills? Yeah, I was on the tills. I mean, I'm crap at shelf stacking, so... <laughs> 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 tills is the only place they were going to put me. I imagine the till might be a bit hit and miss as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was the reason why they brought in self-scanning. <laughs> <laughs> the, the long game of it is to get to improve shopping experiences around the supermarket and I don't think that's going to make much difference. If they want to they want to make shopping better, I just think, simple, just make a shopping trolley that adults can sit in. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Who's going to push you around now? I'll just ask someone. <laughs> I'll just gonna... sit there until someone pushes <laughs> me around. Or, or you could get a baguette. <laughs> <laughs> Punt around the supermarket. A couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Sean Steen, what do you think the nation will be talking about this week? Is it, um, well, hit right into my territory here. It's uh, <laughs> Justin Bieber's done some things. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Bieber. Well, police in Brazil have charged Bieber with illegally spraying graffiti in Rio. Uh, defacing buildings is a crime in Brazil, punishable by up to one year in jail. I can't imagine Justin Bieber surviving a whole year. <laughs> but it'd be, be a hell of a week for the inmates. <laughs> you like one of those piñata, Mexican piñata toys. <laughs> they just keep bashing him till sweets just fall out of him. He's just a kid, isn't he? I do... F I f I, well, I think I feel a bit sorry for him. When I see him now, I hate him. <laughs> but, you know, he first did a video when he was 16 of him on a guitar, and he's a really nice little kid in his mum's house doing a little song, and then I kind of think, I think we made him a twat. <laughs> I don't know, I get really upset because, as a believer, you know... <laughs> and I know you'll find it unbelievable that I am a believer. I find it unbelievable. I'm <laughs> sick and tired <laughs> of unbelievers mocking our beliefs. <laughs> Well, I can tell you it's not in our top five, but Justin Bieber appears to be having a meltdown in Brazil. According to tabloid reports, whilst in Brazil, Justin Bieber allegedly visited a brothel. He must have ordered off the kids' menu because he had a mini sausage, fish fingers, and then he spilt his beans. <laughs> John Steen, what else did the nation be talking about? Uh, the Call of Duty came out. The Call of Duty? <laughs> Call of Duty's come out on your Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> on the first day it came out, it made $1 billion worldwide. So it's bigger than any film 
any mm. music, just huge. Mm. I yeah. ordered one, not this one, it was the last one. I went into the shop and I pre-ordered it and I went and you, I like, paid like a £10 deposit or whatever. He went, are you coming for the midnight one? And I went, do I have to come at midnight to get the copy? And he went, no, no, but you're not just going to come. I went, no. <laughs> he, went, he went, I'll be good, man. No, I won't. <laughs> Standing in a queue at midnight outside a shop with loads of sort of like comic book reading 30 year old men. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> I wouldn't queue for a game at midnight. I don't like queuing for Oceana at midnight. <laughs> <let alone game. laughs> but what I love about the new Call of Duty game is that you can play as a dog. And for me, that makes it a very different game. It's like, how many people have you killed? Well, none, but I've had two shits and a bit of postman. <laughs> Jordan, have you ever played a video game? Are you...? No, I just... I don't see what's wrong with Conkers, really. Just... <laughs> How could you not have a better game than that? And you don't need a queue. Nobody ever stood round a Conker tree at midnight going, the big one's gonna drop. I'm getting it. What I was wondering about computer games, you know in a computer game, if you walk into a wall or something, he goes... Bleh. I was thinking, that was someone's job to make that noise. <laughs> <laughs> Someone got paid to sit in a studio for a day going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do that. If, if they make a game where there's a little gremlin wandering around, I'd happily spend a week of my life going, <laughs> oh. What about the guy whose job it was to find out what noise you make when you walk into a wall? <laughs> <laughs> Surely you got it now. <laughs> I don't really play, like, Call of Duty. I play a lot of, like, FIFA. But the worst thing about online gaming is the messages you get from people when you beat them. Like, I had one the other day, which was all in Spanish, and I Google translated it, <laughs> and it wasn't very nice. <laughs> and if you're watching Carlitos97, I don't shag my mum, so the joke's on you. <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see if Call of Duty is up there. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. What do you think? Is it uh, Michael O'Leary, the boss of Ryanair, mm. promising that he's going to give us better customer service on Ryanair at last? He said, I'm not going to charge anyone to use the toilet and you're not going to have to pay to have a chair <laughs> and I'm not going to put you in the roof rack if you didn't print <laughs> your boarding pass. <laughs> So this is allocated seating on Ryanair. I mean, should you expect good service on one of these low-cost airlines? I'm, cl I'm glad they're doing allocated seating on Ryanair because I, what I, when I travel on my own, what I like to do is I, I look at the queue and I try and spot someone I think it would be quite nice to sit next to. And then <laughs> I follow them down the queue and as they're checking in, I jump in and go, I'd like to sit next to him, please. <laughs> <laughs> and then... We chat for the whole flight, it's brilliant. Um, a lot of people say you meet weirdos on planes, but I've never met one. <laughs> I've got some quotes here from, uh, from O'Leary. He's extraordinary at giving quotes. On charging people to use the toilet, he said, I would wipe their bums for a fiver. That's good value. <laughs> yeah, <I'll> probably... <laughs> I'm not bothered all that. On overweight passengers, this is nice, he said, nobody wants to sit beside a really fat bastard. <laughs> thing is, normally, fat people, quite bubbly. <laughs> Have you flown Ryanair, Sean? Yeah, I don't, I don't particularly, uh, uh, you know, if I can avoid it, I would avoid it. But when you're paying £12.99 to fly to Dublin, I mean, that's incredible. I mean, you know, I, you, two quid for a go on the Dodgems. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get very far. No. I tried, I tried to break out of that ring. <laughs> Michael O'Leary often gets a stick for not taking complaints seriously. Here he is getting grilled by Eamon Holmes. We can't even vomit on your planes, you see, because if we go to be sick, there's not even a bag to puke into. But you'd be so on time on such a beautiful new all-leather seat, brand new aircraft, and we'd sell you the vomit bag. But nobody gets sick on Ryanair. They're saving so much money, they uh, just spend the time laughing. <laughs> The worst thing they do, that punctuality argument, when you land on a flight and if it's on time, they do a little... <laughs> that is the very least I expected, that you wouldn't kill me. <laughs> I was on a Ryanair flight once and the, the tape machine had broken down and the bloke had to do it himself. You know, the... <laughs> and he came over his hand and went... <laughs> 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 no, no, Ryanair flight on time. That was worth the, the £2.40 I'd spent on the flight. <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see if Ryanair is up there. <laughs> yes, Ryanair has agreed to offer allocated seating. I'll tell you what you can't take away from Ryanair. They're headphones, because they don't give you any. <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers, one more thing still to get. I like the story of the Indian mission to Mars. 
A few years ago, the Chinese <laughs> put a mission into space, and it's quite funny. It's a very similar response to it. The Chinese have got into space, and the British press had the same kind of reaction they had with the Indian one, which is a bit like cool runnings. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, is, it is. It's a bit like, why, what? The Indians go, you know, they go, have got a space mission going yeah, on. And the thing I think's odd about it is it costs like 48 million. No, but this is it. This is why it's controversial because Britain gives 280 million pounds in aid annually to India and the mission costs 45 million. They go into Mars. Yeah. So we're giving them this money and they're leaving. <laughs> it's like you've lent your mate money who's skint so he can come out on a night out and he's got a round in and hasn't got you a drink. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll tell you what's mad. The, co the cost of it is half of Gareth Bale. <laughs> That's what's... They could, Real Madrid could have bought a slightly shitter player and gone to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put it in those terms. Uh, Roisin, would you, would you like to go to Mars? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> no. Um... It wasn't like a date <laughs> suggestion. <was it? laughs> it sounded like one, Jimmy. Um... <laughs> I don't understand. It's got so, so much poverty there, and I think their priorities are completely mental. They, it's like someone who's got a voxel in their garden with no wheels, yet they put tinted windows in and a sound system. <laughs> <laughs> They've got so much poverty there, they can't justify spending that money going to Mars. When I'm skint, the first thing to go is space exploration. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut it out. <laughs> The whole thing with the mission is to tell whether there's methane in the atmosphere. So basically, they spent 45 million to see if Mars smells of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the fit, like, what's the point of that? I'd like to live yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Joe, over to you. Um... I'd like to be the first person to live there. It'd be brilliant. Cos you'd probably get a house with quite a big garden. <laughs> Big enough for a trampoline. I don't think you need a trampoline there. I think it's bouncy. Well, that's why I want one, mate. Go well, I. <laughs> I'd, start, I'd, I'd run a small business. I'd um, start a pub. And I'd call it the Mars Bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a proper joke. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> one joke. Well, let's have a look and see if the Indian uh, mission to Mars is up there. <laughs> Of course, India aren't the only country with a new space programme. Earlier this year, Iran said they plan to put a man on the moon by 2025 by nuking Israel. <laughs> so those were the most talked about things this week. But in other news, during their trial, it was revealed that Rebecca Brooks and Andy Coulson have had an affair. We don't know if Andy Coulson was tapping phones, but we do know he was tapping Rebecca Brooks. <laughs> and if anything, I think that's worse. <laughs> So Alex Ferguson's book has become the fastest selling piece of non fiction in history. Alex Ferguson's book details his incredible journey from slightly pink to red and ultimately a bright purpley colour. <laughs> Wayne Rooney's very keen to read Ferguson's book and he'll get onto it just as soon as he finds out what's happened to this very hungry caterpillar. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Sean, Joe, and Roisin have two points. John, Alex, and Chris have three points. <laughs> So our next round is Pick of the Polls. Sean, Joe, Rasheen, pick a question. Um, the bear, please, Jimmy. OK. Last week, an 80-year-old Russian man survived a fight with a bear. <laughs> True story. He bravely kicked and headbutted the bear before the bear threw him off a cliff. <laughs> he survived, but a bear basically came at him and he fought him off. So we asked our studio <coughs> audience, do you consider yourselves brave? Yes or no? Uh, if... I was really hoping you had a clip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dismissing the bravery of a man, but it sounds to me like he survived because he got thrown off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to speculate, had the fight continued, he would have got the shit kicked out. <laughs> he was an 80-year-old Russian shepherd. He was approached by a bear uh, in a raspberry field. <laughs> <laughs> so this is true. This is a, this is a nursery This is happened this week. Approached, approached by a bear in a raspberry field. <laughs> he, he showered him with kicks and headbutts. <laughs> A reporter Sorry. say he managed to knock the bear off balance before it threw him off a cliff. <laughs> he was hospitalised with bruises, bite wounds and four broken ribs. Wow. Discharged within a few days and it's not known how the bear is. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it all. We're sitting slagging a man off and fought a bear. We're like, ah. <laughs> We're sitting in London in a warm studio. He fought a fucking bear. <laughs> yeah, alive. in a raspberry field. Get over <laughs> <laughs> What's a shepherd doing in a raspberry field? How mobile are these raspberries? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Well, I like the line, he was approached by the bear. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. If you're the shepherd, a bear goes, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, to be fair, we've it's only bear. got the shepherd's version of this story. <laughs> I'd like to hear the bear's bear version. <laughs> in bear news. Yeah. The bear was sexually was... assaulted today by a, like... mad, <laughs> a mad <laughs> Russian. <laughs> Joe, if you got attacked by a bear, what would your strategy be? What would you do? Work the body. But you know, I mean, I wouldn't be. I'd, the best way to deal with a bear, if a bear attacks you, yeah. and this is genuine, if a bear attacks you, is stay very still and, and wait for it until it gets really close, and until it's literally about... <laughs> about there, and then you just go, whoa, like that. <laughs> and because it's got those big round feet, it just goes, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> they can't adjust, they quite... They've got, they got no balls on their feet. So you just go, whoa, like that, and it just throws them. <laughs> and then you're... And sometimes I've been attacked by loads of bears, and they're just literally going, whoa! And they're all behind me in a big pile. <laughs> Would you remember that under attack? Because you know there's so much information about dealing with animals that I think if a bear attacked me, I'd probably like piss on my feet or something, you know, <laughs> get confused with jellyfish. So you'd have yeah. to remember it. Would you remember that? Well, the difference between a bear and a jellyfish, <laughs> easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We asked our studio audience, do you consider yourself brave? Yes or no? Uh, John, I've, I associate you with um, machismo and, and uh, sort of all, all things that are. I mean, are you brave? Would you, you consider yourself brave? I think sometimes, Jimmy, the bravest thing you can do is just be yourself. <laughs> um, I think if that means shitting your pants and crying, then, yeah, I'm brave. <laughs> I always, I'm not very brave. I always used to get called brave when I was younger, like, if I was in hospital, I'd get a card saying how brave I was. But I wasn't there through choice. <laughs> it wasn't like I was sat at home playing with stickle bricks and I thought, I'll show people how hard as nails I am. I'll go and have major surgery. Show them how brave I am. <laughs> I suppose, in fairness to the person, whoever was writing the card going, you're so brave, what were they meant to put? Well done. Still here. <laughs> <laughs> we asked our studio audience, do you consider yourself brave, yes or no? What do you think they said, Sean? Yes. What do you think, Sean? No. Nah. You go, no, okay. I can tell you the answer is yes. 60% of our studio audience do consider themselves to be brave. <laughs> Interesting fact, I'm actually a very brave little boy. And I know that because my mummy told me. <laughs> okay, Johnstein, what do you like the look of? I like the look at this guy with the beard. Okay, it was the World Beard and Moustache Championships in Germany this week, so we asked our studio audience, do you think facial hair is attractive, yes or no? Call me sexist, but not on women, no. <laughs> John, you've got sort of the beginnings of facial hair, haven't you? You've got... Well, this is just there. laziness. I just can't be asked to shave all the time. It's just a waste of time, isn't it, shaving? It's fun, though. I grow it, cos it's fun. I get it just long enough that I can shave it in instalments. <laughs> and I'd shave that bit first so I get a little neat beard, and then I crop it under like that so you get a little wanker beard. <laughs> and then you leave it. I feel sorry for women that never get to do that. You never get that. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Machine, what do you think? Depends what's going on with the rest of the face. You can't judge. How do you mean what's going on with the rest of the face? What? Like, asking if you think facial hair is attractive is a bit like saying, do you like teeth? Like, you know, yes. Yeah, but you know. I like teeth on a girl. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe we're even having this discussion. Like, but, look at Joe. Yeah, I'm dynamite. <laughs> Do you like it? Do you actually like it? Of course I don't. <laughs> Who would like this? It's fun, facial hair, and it's warm as well for winter. Mm. It's like a cardigan for your face. <laughs> Chindigan. <laughs> It's not attractive, though, is it, to answer the question? It's not sexy, is it? OK, well, what do you think? I'm adamant that it's a yes. I think it's very in at the minute. Like, I mean, it's definitely not that. <laughs> but, I mean, Joe's... Well, no, not that either, but, like, a kind of... <laughs> like a designer stubble, like what John's going on. I think it's very attractive. Well, you're very kind to say so. Not a problem. <laughs> Have you grown oh. a beard? Do you want to try one? Or do I want to try one? I've got... I've, I've brought moustaches. Definitely. <laughs> oh, my God. I think that's the one for me. <laughs> I still feel I could run quite a good regional, like a regional department store. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Sean, any interest in a moustache? You're more than welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a bloke off the Pringles. Oh, you, well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I could sell Pringles, um... couldn't I? 
What would you, what would you care for? What about you've, me? Got a, you've got a buffet of moustaches there. I do, of course, of course I do. Would you like one, Rochelle? Yes, please. Of course you would. Hang on. Here you go. <laughs> this will look terrific on you, because I think for the, for the blonde colour. Thank you. No problem at all. Happy to help. There's no point, Joe. <laughs> Some games <laughs> you can't play. I like a cat. <laughs> you, you really do look like a cat. Leave it on, I like it. It's... <laughs> Leave it on for a second, I, I'm loving it. Did you, um... It's, um... It's, uh, it's not unattractive, but you do... I like that. <laughs> yes, I am a murderer. <laughs> it's not my fault. In terms of attraction, though, I mean, that's pretty sexy, right? Mm. <laughs> Sean? <laughs> I feel like I'm in a strange nightclub and I go... <laughs> I to go, oh, they like it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give one to... Uh, let's, let's, should we give one to... Should we give John a proper moustache? It'd be lovely for him to try, proper wouldn't it? Proper moustache, how very dare you. <laughs> Philly boots, though. You bounder, you cad. <laughs> well, I, I, I very much like it on you, actually. You've awakened something dark <laughs> in my sexuality. Thank you. John looks like a magician. <laughs> <laughs> Is that supposed to be like this? It really yeah. hurts. <laughs> That's a really good look for you, trust me. I'm, like, forgetting things. It's nipping that hard. <laughs> you look like a rival cat. You look like you've got whiskers on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go on for you, Joe. <laughs> Could you just see what you'd look, look like with a beard? OK, let's get some answers on this. So, do you think facial hair is attractive? No, obviously not, no. Oh, yeah. What did yes, sorry, yes, I mean, yes. What I, was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. I've nearly kissed yes. two girls. <laughs> so, what, what do you guys think? I think facial hair is not attractive. So you're saying no, you're saying yes? I can tell you the answer is yes. 64% of our audience think facial hair is attractive. <laughs> Different beards can mean different things. For example, a Santa Claus-style beard means friendly with kids, whereas a Joe Wilkinson-style beard means too friendly with kids. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's four points for Sean's team and three points for John's team. <laughs> so, the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your first one. Top way to pamper yourself. Uh, sit down wee. <laughs> Occasion would you treat yourself to a lovely sit down way? Uh, early morning, late at night, after a big meal. <laughs> I don't mean that's pampering yourself, sit down way. Really want to pamper yourself. You know those Dyson air blades? <laughs> Tea bag, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's risky because you've got to have one foot on the door as well. <laughs> one leg up. Actually, the facilities manager wanted me to bring that up with you. And it, <laughs> sort of looking for the right time to mention that. Yeah, well, if you're wondering why it came off the wall. <laughs> uh, John, how do you pamper yourself? Uh, just get drunk, really. <laughs> Pampering, for me, as a word, means, like, oh, I'm going to pamper myself senseless this weekend. I'm going to go out and get absolutely pampered. <laughs> <laughs> well, number two is an expensive glass of wine. So a lot of people do that as they're, they're a little treat. No, they don't. Have you been out into the world? <laughs> People are out there, oh, this weekend I'm going to have one... I'm going to have one good glass of wine. People are out at the at 9 o'clock. What is the best wine you have? <laughs> I just want one glass. They go, oh, what is the cheapest wine you have? <laughs> I've not been to a Yates, but it's a wine lodge, yes? Yeah. Well, uh, of course, you'd talk to the sommelier about that <laughs> <laughs> on offer and you would order the finest wine that they have. <laughs> Carton of your finest wine. <laughs> What is good on the way down and back up again? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, Joe, what would you do to pamper yourself? Uh, well, I do pamper myself. What I actually do is I have... Um, if I really want to pamper myself, I have one of my Verrucas frozen up. <laughs> Love that. It's nice, though, isn't it? It's satisfying. <laughs> Pampering can be quite creepy when people are being paid to wash your hair. <laughs> and they're sort of, you always they're sort of 16 year old girls sort of pretending they're like mass art. It's awful, it's horrible, it's like really intimate and fake. It's I love nice. it. 
Do you? You like it as well. Yeah, we I, I quite like it, yeah. <laughs> they hate you when they're doing that, you know that. What do you mean they hate me? <laughs> because I used to do it when I was 14. I worked in a hairdresser's and I used to wash people's hair and they're like, oh, that's lovely. I hate you so much. <laughs> 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 Look at this strange hair I'm having to wash for £22. <laughs> <laughs> they hate you when it's really? happening, yeah. Oh, that makes it even better. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I like to do is I like to uh, light a load of scented candles. I get in the bath and then I just wait for whose ever house I've broken into. <laughs> <laughs> what, come out like Martin Sheen in the apocalypse <laughs> now. Who <laughs> <In> the petals? <laughs> <laughs> Alex, do you, you pamper yourself? Pedicures, cos I get them cheap. <laughs> I've always wanted to go into one of those fish foot spas with my prosthetic leg on and just say to the person next to me, like, don't leave your feet in there for too long. <laughs> <laughs> because I found out the hard way. <laughs> Always wanted to do that. OK, hot way to pamper yourself. Was it not, like, a spa day or something? Well, a massage is number three. It's an everyday activity. People do it all the time and then... What do you mean, like, e eating? Rollerblading. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with retail. Shopping. Shopping. The right answer. Yes, the top way to pamper yourself is a shopping spree. My girlfriend goes to the off-licence every day and comes home with three bottles of wine. I think she might be a shopaholic. <laughs> OK, worst thing to do when you're drunk? Um, I once tried to eat everything in my pencil case. <laughs> uh, Chris, you're, you're from the north. Uh, worst thing to do when you're drunk? Um, <laughs> like your you. specialist area. Text while driving. Deny it, in my experience. <laughs> Pretending you're not drunk when you're clearly pissed. <laughs> it's horrendous. I've had times when I can't even say the words I'm not drunk and still sworn blind. <laughs> oh, you, do you know what I You'd even accuse me. <laughs> <laughs> you get quite a lot older when you're drunk, don't you? It's Slightly <laughs> Irish. <laughs> Slightly Irish. It's called acting. <laughs> and I am shit at it. <laughs> <laughs> Roisin, what's the worst thing you've done when you're drunk? What do you think? I, I always get drunk before I go on holiday. So I've gone on holiday uh, once with one leg shaved and <laughs> fake tanned and the other one completely white. And I had to do three <laughs> days on holiday like that. I've gone on holiday with one shoe and a bra. That's on your I've feet? <laughs> no, that's what I had in a suitcase. But I, there was two <laughs> suitcases and I was so drunk that I took the suitcase that was empty and it had a bra. It wasn't even a clean bra. It was a bra from another holiday. <laughs> um, OK, worst thing to do when you're drunk? I'd, I like to go to Bassey Dogs' home, see how many dogs they'll let me have. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I can take... I've got a wheelbarrow. Just put him in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> I look after him. Hello, <laughs> 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 See if I can get about 30 dogs. <laughs> they, won't let, they won't let you take them if they think you're really pissed. <laughs> they are if you like get that. into the cages and lie down with them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Alice? What do you think? Send Snapchats to your female friends. <laughs> so many of them don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> what are you talking about? What's a Snapchat? It's like... Oh, Brandon's oh. woken up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it again, I'll do it again. <laughs> well, it was Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, what Snapchat have you It's sent? like a little uh, app on your phone and you can... You send a picture to someone quickly and then it automatically deletes after five seconds or how many seconds you want it to. Why does that exist? It's so people can send each other um, photos and then they know that they're gone. They can't... The other person can't save them. I don't understand. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely don't so understand. People, people send each other dirty photos and then they can't Why? show their mates. It's flashing, though. So it's basically <laughs> flashing. What they've done is... It's someone been... that you know. <laughs> How well would you know someone before you did that? Oh, not at all for me, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I can't just do that to your dentist or something. <laughs> you can if you should take. <laughs> <laughs> Or just a plumber you used once and you kept his number. <laughs> Send him a picture of your knob and then you go. <laughs> if I'm sending a plumber a picture of my willy, I want him to have it forever. Stripping off is never a good idea, is it? 
That's the right answer. Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Alex and Chris have four points, Sean, Joe and Roisin have five points. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Thanks for watching it, and somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.